On Friday, President Biden outlined the proposed deal at the White House. It's time to begin this new stage for the hostages to come home, for Israel to be secure, for the suffering to stop. It's time for this war to end, and for the day after to begin. President Biden described the ceasefire plan as an Israeli proposal, but Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has not yet publicly backed it. One of his aides said Israel's agreed to the framework of the deal, but no official announcement has been made. Two far-right members of the Israeli government, Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich and National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Gavir, have threatened to leave Netanyahu's government if he supports the truce proposal. On Saturday, tens of thousands of Israelis, led by relatives of hostages, took part in protests calling on Netanyahu not to sabotage the ceasefire deal. We demand that Netanyahu stand up and publicly support the Israeli proposal which President Biden presented yesterday. Stand up in front of the Israeli citizens and publicly accept this deal. This comes as Benjamin Netanyahu has accepted an invitation from U.S. House Speaker Mike Johnson and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to address a joint session of Congress. Senator Bernie Sanders slammed the plan to host Netanyahu at a time when the International Criminal Court is seeking his arrest for war crimes. A number of Democrats are expected to boycott Netanyahu's address. We'll speak to former Israeli peace negotiator Daniel Levy. Despite the calls for a ceasefire, Israel is continuing its relentless war on Gaza, where the official death toll has topped 36,400. Over 120 bodies have been recovered in the Jabalia refugee camp, which has been reduced to rubble by Israeli forces. Residents turn to the largest camp in Gaza, Jabalia, to find their homes destroyed. After 20 days, we were able to return home, praying to God that nothing had happened. We returned and found nothing. We don't even know what to get. What should we try to get a hold of? Nothing. The Israelis displaced us, humiliated us, they starved us, and caused a Nakba. We do not know where to go. Where should people go? Nowhere. The North is finished. That is what we return to. I don't know what to retrieve. Look, if we get the bedding, we find that it is torn. Whatever we get, it is torn. Where should we go? Here, this is my home. I can't even find it, I swear. It's all crushed into pieces. What should we do? God is my suffice and my best disposer. In central Gaza, an Israeli attack on the Burej refugee camp killed six women and children. Another four Palestinians died in an Israeli attack on the Nusadat refugee camp. Meanwhile, the U.N. is reporting more than a million Palestinians have now fled Rafah as Israel expands its attack on the southern city. U.N. shelters in Rafah are now empty. This comes as Palestinian officials warn over 3,500 children in Gaza are at risk of death due to starvation. In other news from the region, at least 16 people have reportedly been killed in the Syrian city of Aleppo in a suspected Israeli strike targeting an Iran-affiliated militia. Protests over Israel's war on Gaza continue. On Friday, police raided a student encampment at the University of California, Santa Cruz. About 80 arrests were made. This comes as academic workers continue to strike at UC Santa Cruz. Strikes are expanding this week at three more University of California campuses. Strikes begin today at UC Santa Barbara and UC San Diego, followed by UC Irvine on Wednesday. At the University of Chicago, dozens of students walked out of their commencement after school officials withheld diplomas from four seniors who participated in a Gaza solidarity encampment on campus. Protesters could be heard screaming, stop genocide, during the ceremony. At Vassar College here in New York, hundreds of alumni disrupted the school's reunion weekend. More than 1,200 Vassar alumni have vowed to withhold donations until the school cuts ties with companies supplying Israel with weapons. Here in New York City, students at Columbia University set up a new encampment named Revolt for Rafa on Friday as the school held its alumni reunion weekend. 
Also in New York, student protesters disrupted commencement ceremonies at Hunter College's Silverman School of Social Work. Protesters displayed banners with the logos of universities destroyed in Gaza. Meanwhile, on Friday, New York police arrested 34 protesters as they attempted to occupy the Brooklyn Museum and protested outside. We'll air footage from the action later in the program.